Hi, welcome to the second part of the lobby data. In this part, the players are going to be able to click a button to broadcast to the other players that they are ready to play. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by looking what changed in the project. So uh, first thing, we had it uh, in the lobby UI, a ready button here. Um, so that's going to be used, obviously, for uh, the player to set himself as ready. And uh, we changed one more thing in the player prefab here. We added the cylinder, which I'm going to read <laughs> right now to uh, ready, ready, oh boy, ready indicator. So this is going to turn green whenever you know that this player is ready. So it's basically just a little uh, cylinder that we put in front of the player. Um, so that's it. I can show you guys uh, real quick what it looks like, but it's pretty simple. So we're going to go back to our init scene. Just play. And this is what we have. So host is going to spawn. He has his little red button and a ready here that is not going to connect to anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the lobby player and we're going to actually um, change this to green whenever the player is ready. Okay, so here we're going to need a reference to the renderer. Private renderer is ready renderer so this is the renderer of the cylinder so that we can actually change its color uh, changing material uh, properties is done by material property block so property block that's fine so on start start we're gonna create a new material property block so property block equals new material property block Okay, so now here, what we want to do is we set the uh, player uh, text, the player name, and then if the in the data, the player is ready, oh, that did not, is ready, um, and if is renderer is not null, then what we want to do is here we go. We want to change this color. So we're going to go is ready renderer dot get property block, and we're going to pass in our property property block. Um, yeah, I'm going to copy paste it. I don't know. My computer is not cooperating. There you go. Property block, and then we're going to change whatever we want on the property block. So in our case, we want to set the color. Um, this is the name you would see in the shader. So it's called base color for the base color. And we want to put it to uh, green because the player is actually ready. Uh, right now, there's no way to go back and forth between ready and uh, not ready, but um, you would do it the exact same thing for red if the player wasn't ready um, so that uh, we can uh, unset the ready state. And then we just simply just set the property block to our oops, sorry property block so that's all we have to do for this part of the uh, lobby player now whenever the text uh, the player is ready uh, in the data we, we receive we're gonna set his little cylinder to green okay now we're gonna go into the lobby ui and we're gonna have the reference to uh, the actual button uh, we take the one in Unity UI uh, for the is ready. So the one that the player is going to click. So ready button. Okay, so uh, for that to work, we're going to need to add some listeners. So let's go on enabled. Uh, we're going to do ready button dot unclick that add listener. And then we're going to need here, uh, let's see here, uh, private. Uh, private. Uh, let's put it a sync because we're going to need that on ready uh, pressed. Okay, so there you go. For now, that's it. So we're going to go and plug this in. We do the same thing on disable. So on disable, but we oh, disable. Uh, but we're going to clear um, remove all listener. On click that remove 
a listener because that's the only one that should be um, actually listening to that input to that to that button click so okay so on the on press here we're gonna do bull succeed and we want to await this and it's the game lobby manager that instance that set player ready so he's gonna set the local player to ready and if it succeed succeed here we're gonna do ready button dot uh, game object that's set active to false. So we want to actually disable the player um, if we uh, actually set ourselves uh, ready. Okay, so let's go in here. Let's create that method in the game lobby manager. And here it's even simpler. So that's why we kind of did the work in the previous video to get the lobby, uh, the local lobby data. So what we want to do here is as simple as local lobby dot is ready equals true so we set the local lobby data and then we're just gonna ask the uh, lobby sorry lobby manager dot instance dot update player data and we're gonna pass him the id of the player which is a uh, the local player id dot id and then the the data so the local dot serialized and that's going to be it i prefer keeping it that so let's generate this function here we're just sending the data to unity but we've already done so much work um, before that um, it's actually going to be super easy so actually here we're going to rename this to data because that's what it is and here uh, what we want to do is we want a dictionary of oops string uh, player data object um, player data and it's equals to serialize player data and we pass in the data since we already did this for the join and create it's just something we can reuse so the method we're actually going to want to call is um let's say here await lobby service uh, right here dot instance dot update uh, update player async so this method is actually expecting a lobby id a player id and uh, update player options so let's create the option first update player options um, options so in here you can basically, oh, sorry, uh, update um, all the information regarding a player. So for us here, what we want to update is the data. So data equals, well, player data. There we go. That's that's all we need. So we're going to do this. And then we can do here, um, try to be sure to catch any exception that, that this thing is going to launch. For the lobby... Um, for the lobby ID, we have the lobby dot ID. Uh, for the player ID, we have the um, the actual here. Let's rename it so it's clear player ID. We have it also in the data. It's just kind of a preference of mine to have just set it here, but because then you're not obligated to have it in data. And then we need the options. Here we go. Um, we can catch uh, any um system that exception to catch everything and then if whatever error happened we're going to return false other than that we kind of want to tell everybody that hey um the one in game framework here uh the lobby was updated so on lobby updated and we're going to put uh, a lobby so important here, we're going to store because this is returning us an updated version of the lobby. So we, we want to kind of store it. And then we want to tell everybody if everything was fine. Uh, there's a new lobby. Return true. Um, so that um, we kind of update our own UI to set it to uh, true. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of it. Uh, now we're going to be able to uh, uh, send update player data back in Unity. Let's go into the lobby scene. Let's go into the lobby UI. We're going to take that ready button and link it here. 
and there's uh, one more link we need to do, which is in the um, prefab. So we're gonna go in the prefab here, lobby player, and in here, uh, we need the renderer on the ready indicator. So uh, that's it. Now we can uh, actually test it. So let's go and uh, let's go back into um, the init scene. There we go. And we're going to start from here. Okay. Now I can host my uh, guy is here. And if I hit ready, there we go. I'm actually ready. So now we're going to build and test it with another player. Here it is. Now it's built. So let's start our editor version. And we're going to host here. Join W-Y-G-K. So remember, like you had to click for this to happen. We're going to join. There you go. He appear here. And it's going to take some time here, but here we go. Here he is. So now we have the ready button. Ready. I'm ready. I go here. He's ready. Ready. Ready here. And it can take a little bit. And there we go. They are both ready. And the data is synced between each lobby. So they uh, are able to send data. So that's basically how you would send data for anything. So the only thing to remember is at the end of the day, it needs to be a string. And that's why we're doing, um, that's why in the lobby player data, we're doing this part. So when we serialize it, we take any data and convert it to a string. And there it is for the part two of the lobby data. In the next video, we're going to implement the map selection. So the host is going to be able to select the map and um, every client is going to see the change in real time. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.